In this video, we'll be going over confusing card mechanics in Yu-Gi-Oh! Generally, things that confuse new players to the game, and even a few things that veteran players forget about. And at number 10, we have Dark Worlds. Just the whole archetype. It's very confusing for new players because it doesn't work exactly the way you think. Let's go over Beige Vanguard of Dark World. It's one of the most simple out of all of them. And what it does is if this card is discarded to the graveyard by a card effect, you get to special summon it from the graveyard. Pretty simple effect, so if you use the effect of Raigeki Break, it allows you to discard one card to destroy one card in the field. You'd think that would be good enough to activate the effect of Beige, and you'd be wrong. Why? Because Raigeki Break discards as a cost, and Dark World specifically need to be discarded by an effect. And what separates an effect from a cost? Well, understanding the text of a card very carefully. Cards like Dark World Lightning have an effect, which allows you to target one set card in the field and destroy it, then it allows you to discard one card. And since the discard is after the destruction, that's actually the effect of the card, which would allow you to activate Dark Worlds. There's also a card like Card Destruction, which forces both players to discard all cards from their hand and then draw the same number of cards that they discarded, which does activate the effects of Dark Worlds because these two effects happen simultaneously, and therefore are part of the effect where neither one of them is a cost. And then you have cards like Temple Block, which requires you to discard one card first in the card text, then special summon two monsters, which does allow you to activate Dark World effects because the effects happen simultaneously, and it's a confusing mess to understand why. But basically, it's because it doesn't say then in its card text and simply continues onto the effect without any kind of wording to imply that it happens afterwards. So, because Dark Worlds were so confusing to activate, they kind of released another archetype called the Fables, which activates when they're discarded by both cost or card effects which probably just confuses new players even more that there is a whole series of cards out there which do activate from being discarded with Raigeki Break, but that doesn't work with Dark Worlds. And at number 9, we have Missing the Timing. So, what this one means is if a card has an effect that only activates when it's sent to the graveyard, for example, as that's the most common way this effect happens, there is a chance that you just can't use the effect under certain circumstances. For example, the entire Yang Zing archetype. They all have the effect which reads, when this card you control is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Yang Zing monster from your deck. Which is a pretty simple to understand effect. But it can miss timing if it's not the last thing that happens. So say you have a Yang Zing monster on your side of the field, and then you use Dark Hold to try to destroy it so you can activate its effect. Then your opponent chains a Raigeki Break to your Dark Hole in order to destroy the exact same Yang Zing monster. Well, then the chain would resolve backwards, Raigeki Break would destroy your card, then Dark Hole would activate afterwards. And since the last thing that happened was the Dark Hole activating, you'd miss the timing of being able to use the Yang Zing. Another card, Blue Dragon Summoner, it has the effect that if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one monster from your deck to your hand. If Blue Dragon Summoner was destroyed under the exact same conditions, its effect would activate and allow you to search out a card. The difference between the two is that Blue Dragon Summoner has if in its card text, whereas the Yang Zing has when. Cards with if can activate in a more generous window as long as their conditions are met, whereas when cards need to activate immediately when their conditions are fulfilled. Unless it's a mandatory effect, like Skullmarked Ladybug for example. It has the effect, when this card is sent to the graveyard, increase your life points by 1000 points. And since there's no option to activate this, it can't miss timing and will always go off. So some when cards miss timing and some don't. The way to remember it is whether or not the effect is optional. If it's an optional when effect, then it's very easy for it to miss timing with something like Soul Taker. But if it's a when mandatory effect, or an if effect, then it won't miss timing, and you just kind of have to memorize that in all the situations which cause when effects to miss timing. And at number 8, we have cards which cause infinite loops. This one is a little bit lesser known since there's so few ways to actually cause infinite loops in the game. But basically, there's a ruling in place where if you would do something that would cause an infinite loop, you're not allowed to do that thing unless that thing is literally unavoidable, in which case you just destroy the card which is causing the loop. 
a lot to remember? Well, it's a lot easier if I show examples. Say we have pole position on the field. This card has an effect that only affects the monster on the field with the highest attack, in which case they become immune to spell card effects. So, if you have Elemental Hero Stratos on your side of the field, and the field spell card Sojin, this would increase the attack of your Stratos by 200, bringing it up to 2000 attack. But then pole position would make the card immune to spell card effects, which would bring it down to 1800, as it's no longer affected by the field spell card. So if your opponent summons a monster with more than 1800 attack, pole position would no longer work on Stratos and go to that card, which will allow the field spell card to increase his attack by 200. But if the monster your opponent summoned only had 1900 attack, then Stratos would have the new highest attack on the field, and it would cause an infinite loop of being unaffected and then affected by the field spell card with no change in game state, which would mean your opponent could not summon a monster with 1900 attack because that would be considered causing an infinite loop. Another example, say you have Slifer the Sky Dragon on your side of the field. It has an effect where it gains 1000 attack for each card in your hand. If you have any equip spell card on it that gives it attack and have pole position on the field, then the conditions which can increase the attack of Slifer become just drawing a card. So, if you have one card in your hand and mage power on Slifer, and of course pole position, that would give it 2,000 attack. And if it was the highest attack, then it would go down to 1,000, because it would lose the 1,000 boost from mage power due to the effect of pole position making it immune to spell cards. But if your opponent had a monster with 2,100 attack, you'd be fine, since it would be just low enough not to cause an infinite loop. But then, say, it's your turn and you have to draw a card due to the mechanic of drawing a card at the start of your turn. This would cause Slifer to gain 1000 attack, which would bring it up to 3000, which would then cause Pole Position to take effect, and Infinite Loop with Mage Power to negate its effect, and then give it back because of the new card you just drew. And in this situation, you can't not draw a card for the start of your turn. So, in this unavoidable Infinite Loop, you would just have to destroy Pole Position. Pretty simple, right? Basically, just don't play pole position and you're good to go. And at number 7, we have non-targeting card effects. You see, some cards target monsters, and some cards have effects, which make them immune to being targeted. And then there's some cards which only affect a limited amount of cards on the field, but technically do not target any of them. And the way you can tell a card that targets from one which doesn't is whether or not the card says that they target in their card text. Although not every card which targets says that they target. Take Catnip Kitty for example. It has an effect that reads, once per turn you can make the defense of one monster your opponent controls zero until the end of this turn. It doesn't say target anywhere in its card text, but it does indeed target. Or Medusa Worm. It has the effect that when it's flip summoned, destroy one monster on your opponent's side of the field. Doesn't say target, but it does. Or Chaos Dragon Levianir. If it's brought up by banishing a combination of light and dark monsters from your graveyard, you can destroy up to two cards in the field. And this effect does not target, because you just kind of have to know these things. In fact, cards which can get rid of things without targeting are much more valuable because they get around targeted protection, and you can't really know which cards are going to be picked until the effect resolves. Like with Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. When it's Synchro Summoned, you can banish up to three cards from a combination of your opponent's hand, field, and graveyard, but your opponent can't preemptively protect any of their monsters because you don't know which ones will be banished until it happens. Whereas if you use something like Caius the Shadow Monarch, which allows you to banish a card, you can get rid of the monster that's about to be banished to protect it with something like World Legacy Clash, since you have to target the card before it's banished. But that's not the case with Trishula. Now, most of the newer cards will say if they target or not, so it's only really an issue for older cards, which don't have the updated card text. And at number 6, we have Lingering Effects. A Lingering Effect is when a card gives another card an effect, which isn't reliant on that card being on the field or in some other place. Like all token monsters who have effects, technically have a Lingering Effect, and Lingering Effects cannot be negated. So if you bring out 4 tokens with Scapegoat under a Skill Drain, which normally negates the effects of all monsters in the field, the effect they have which prevents them from being tributed for a tribute summon is still an effect because you can't negate lingering effects. 
There is also the case where the wild monster appears. This card allows you to special summon normally very difficult to summon monsters from your hand, but it will then give them a lingering effect, which returns it back to your deck during your opponent's next end phase. So, if you bring out a monster which is immune to card effects, like Vendomi Naga, the deity of poisonous snakes, even though it's immune to all card effects, it's not immune to lingering effects, since you can't be, and would still get returned to your deck if brought out with Wild Monster Appears. Honestly, lingering effects aren't very difficult, you just can't negate them, but you can reset them. If you're able to flip a monster face down who has a lingering effect, then that lingering effect goes away. Or if a card is removed from the field and then it comes back, it loses the lingering effect. It's more about remembering that you can't negate a lingering effect, but there are ways around it. And at number 5, we have MST doesn't negate, but it can stop card effects. You see, there's a very common thing new players do, where someone activates a spell or trap card, they'll chain a card like Mystical Space Typhoon to it in order to destroy that card, and they'd be confused that the effect of Raigeki Break still goes off. Because just because you destroy a card doesn't mean its effect is negated. In fact, sometimes it could be useful to destroy your own cards in order to allow their effects to go off if they're about to be negated, or to just flip them face down. However, there are circumstances in which MST can stop an effect from activating. Say, your opponent activates the field spell card Union Hanger, which allows you to add a Light Machine Union Monster from your deck to your hand when it's activated. If you chain MST to the activation of Union Hanger, it will be destroyed and not search out a card, because it needs to be on the field for the effect to activate and resolve and if it's no longer there, then it doesn't work anymore. That's kind of the case for face-up spell or trap cards. So most field spell cards or continuous spell or trap cards have one of their effects stopped if you MST on it on activation. Like Fire Formation Tenki, it allows you to search out monsters at activation and can be stopped with an MST because it's a continuous spell card. But there is also a handful of non-continuous spell or trap or field spell cards that can also be stopped with MST. The quick play spell card, Rage with Eyes of Blue, has the effect where, when you activate this card, you have to banish this card and as many cards as possible from your hand field and graveyard face down, then you get to special summon up to three blue eyes from your deck. Part of the condition of this card is that it has to banish itself. So if you MST the card, it will go to the graveyard and it won't banish itself, so the effect won't take place. Although even then, in these situations, it's not technically a negate. A negate is kind of like a keyword in Yu-Gi-Oh, which means something very specific. More like effects just don't happen, which is kind of the same thing, but doesn't count as a negate for the purposes of cards like Power Angel Valkyrie, which has effects that activate when you negate the effects of cards. Those effects won't activate if you simply stop an effect from happening, since it's technically not a negate. And at number 4, we have effects that remember. This is kind of like a lingering effect, just a little bit more complicated. Say you use a card like Spell Reclamation. It allows you to activate it after you activate a spell card, which will allow you to add the spell card to your hand if it's sent to the graveyard. So if you activate it in response to a normal spell card, you'll be able to add it straight back to your hand. If you activate in response to a continuous one, you'll be able to add it back when it's eventually sent to the graveyard. But only once. If you use Spell Reclamation on Upstart Goblin, for example, which allows you to draw one card, it will go to the graveyard, and then you'll be able to add it back to your hand. And you'll be able to use it again immediately, but it will no longer be affected by Spell Reclamation because it forgot the effect, even though the conditions are still basically the same. The card says, whenever the spell card is sent to the graveyard, return it to your hand. It doesn't specify a limit, because it doesn't have to, because of the ruling. So it's basically lingering effects for spell or trap cards, and it can get really complicated with a handful of other stuff. Luckily, there are not a lot of cards that do this, so it's something you don't really have to worry about. And at number three, we have properly special summoning. There are some cards which have effects that restrict them from being normal summoned or set, and then have a condition where they can only be special summoned under very certain circumstances. Take Stardust Dragon Assault Mode, for example. This card cannot be normal summoned or set, and has the condition where it can only be special summoned by the effect of Assault Mode Activate, and cannot be special summoned by other ways except by its own effect as well, which means it has two ways to be brought out. So if you cheat this card out of your hand with a Wild Monster Appears, then you activate its effect, which allows you to tribute itself 
in order to negate and destroy any card your opponent might be using, because then it has another effect, where if it sent itself to the graveyard with its negate, then it can special summon itself during the end phase from the graveyard. However, if this card was cheated out to the field with a wild monster appears, and wasn't brought out properly, then it won't special summon itself from the graveyard, even though it has an effect to special summon itself, and a clause that gives exceptions to its own effect to special summon itself. Because the card needs to be brought out properly first. You see, you can cheat cards out of your deck, your hand, and the extra deck, but not from your graveyard or the banished zone, because of rulings where cards need to be properly brought out first. And this applies to monsters that don't even have effects. Like, say, you special summon the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon due to the effect of Fists of the Unrivaled Tenyi. Then Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon gets destroyed and you want to use Monster Reborn to bring it out later. That won't work because it wasn't brought out properly first. Even though the card doesn't have an effect that restricts its summon, rulings just apply to it because it's an extra deck monster and that's just how it works. So, if you brought it out properly through a fusion summon, and it was then sent to the graveyard, you would be able to use Monster Reborn to bring it back. And funny enough, if it was sent back to the graveyard after that, you'd be able to bring it out again because it remembers that it was brought out properly the first time. So you can keep bringing it out later, and it doesn't forget that it was brought out properly until it's reset back to the extra deck, or unless it's banished. So monsters can remember summoning conditions through lots of use and abuse but not certain kinds of effects, which just adds more confusion to the remembering rulings. And at number two, we have Synchro Summoning from the Graveyard, or just Blackwing Value the Emblem of Honor, since this is the only card in the game that can do that. This card has the effect that while it's in your graveyard, you can target one non-tuner Blackwing monster in your graveyard, and then banish both this card and that target, and if you do, you get to special summon one Blackwing Synchro monster from your extra deck, whose levels equal the combined total of this card and the other Blackwing monster, but that Synchro monster has its effect negated. So, it's basically a Synchro summon from the graveyard, since Value himself is a tuner, but the Synchro monster has its effect negated, but it doesn't count as a Synchro summon, so if the card is brought out with Value the Emblem of Honor, and sent to the graveyard, you can't use Monster Reborn to bring it out later since it wasn't brought out properly. Also, since it's not a Synchro Summon, you can use it to bring out Blackwing Silverwing the Ascendant, even though it requires two or more non-tuners as its materials. You only need the two monsters from your graveyard to bring it out, which normally requires at least three. And since it's not a Synchro Summon, it also gets under cards like Discord, which prevents Synchro Summons. And also, the summon is counted as just a card being special summoned by a card effect. So you can't actually stop it with Solemn Judgment, since it's not considered an inherent special summon like a Synchro Summon is. Basically, this one card caused so much ruling nightmares that they never created a similar card like it afterwards. Which is why Vayu, the Emblem of Honor, is still the only card in the game that allows you to perform an extra deck summon from the graveyard. And at number one, we have monsters which have effects that activate when they're given to your opponent. These are definitely some of the most confusing mechanics in the game, even though they're pretty straightforward once you know the mechanics. Take the card Santa Claus, for example. This card allows you to special summon it from your hand to your opponent's side of the field by tributing one of their monsters. And it also has the effect where if it's summoned this way, once per turn during the end phase of that turn, you get to draw one card. However, your opponent is the one that draws this card because the effect activates from their point of view. And it gets even more confusing when the effect happens to both players, like with Silent Wobby, a card that's pretty infamous for having a confusing effect where this card allows you to special summon it from your hand to your opponent's side of the field. Then it has an effect which reads, when summoned this way, draw one card, and if you do, your opponent gains 2,000 life points. So reading this card real carefully, what it actually does is allow your opponent to draw one card, and then you get to gain 2,000 life points, since it will be read from your opponent's point of view as soon as the first part of the effect is activated, where it goes to your opponent's side of the field. And then it has another effect where the hand size limit of the current card controller becomes 3. This one is a lot easier to understand because it's written in a way that you understand its effect is affecting your opponent when you give it to them. Now, the reason I put this one at number 1, even though a lot of the other mechanics are a lot more confusing, like remembering what a card remembers and forgets under what circumstances, 
is because even though I've made a whole bunch of videos that mention Silent Wobby, I still have to reread its effect to make sure I don't get it wrong, which should say something about how confusing it is, because you have to understand the mechanics of the card to even be able to read the effect correctly. Alright, and that's the video. Are there any other card mechanics that are confusing that I may have missed? If so, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments, as well as ideas for future videos just like this one. And also, did you know, only 41.4% of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel.